Welcome to NPTEL NOC on Point Set Topology Part 2 Module 42 So we will now do some some theorems for n dimensions The spirit is the same thing as we did last time only we are continuing more and more results here a countable union of closed subspaces of dimension less than or equal to n is of dimension less than or equal to n. In other words, countable union of closed subspaces does not increase the dimension. That is what one has to understand. So, I have to take subspaces. Where are they? They are all subspaces of one single separable metric space. Okay. So, consider the following three statements A n, B n, C n. First, A n says a countable union of closed subspaces of dimension less than equal to n is of dimension less than equal to n. This is the statement of the previous of the theorem that is stated now, which we want to prove. But we will take some subsidiary uh, statements here. B n says countable union of f sigma subspaces of dimension less than equal to n is of dimension less than equal to n. From closed subspaces, we have improved the statement in a slightly, you know, slightly that is the f sigma subsets. f sigma are countable union of closed sets. The third one says any space of dimension less than equal to n is a union of subspace, one subspace of dimension less than equal to n minus 1 and another subspace of dimension 0. Okay. So, this is dimension n, union of a subspace of dimension n minus 1 and a subspace of dimension 0. So, here nothing is said about the subspace being closed, that is important here. Okay. So, what I why I said these two are this looks like an improvement, it is not improvement because they are a same because each f sigma is itself a countable un, countable union of closed sets and then you are taking countable union of f sigma. So, that will be countable union of closed sets. So, a n and b n are easily seen to be equivalent, but c n is a somewhat uh, strange thing here. Let us see what is the role of this C n here. The plan is to prove A n that is what we want to prove by induction, but how do we are going to do this one is the following. Once you have proved A n minus 1, we will prove C n. Then I will use A n minus 1 and C n to prove A n. Okay. The statement B n is only subsidiary here, it will play a subsidiary role. Okay, so, this is the plan. So, to begin with A minus 1 is completely obvious, A minus 1 means all, they are all of dimension minus one, less than equal to minus 1. So, they are all empty, countable union of empty sets is empty set, that is nothing to prove that. So, our induction starts at n equal to minus 1. Also, we have earlier proved A naught itself, remember that. I told you today we are not going to prove any uh, new new phenomena or anything, same phenomena we are proving for higher dimension and so on. Okay. Countable union of closed subspaces of dimension 0 is of dimension 0. Less than or equal to dimension 0 is less than or equal to dimension 0. So, this is what we have proved earlier. So, A naught is proved. All right. So, we shall prove, I mean this is just as I do not have to actually prove this one because my induction starts at A minus 1 itself. So, we shall now prove that A n minus 1 implies C n. Okay. Here, we are going to use separability of the metric space that we are working explicitly in. Okay. 
right? Let x be of dimension less than equal to n. That means there is a basis B for the topology of x consisting of open sets U such that dimension of the boundary of U is less than equal to n minus 1 for all U inside B, right? Since x is separable, we may assume that B is countable. So, this is the role of separability here. So, I am just enumerating B as U i, I belong to n. Now, put B i equal to boundary of U i. Okay, all, all of them have dimension less than equal to n minus 1 by the construction here. Now, n minus 1 implies if you take the union of all these B i's, that is of dimension less than equal to n minus 1. Okay. We claim that the complement of B in X, namely dimension of X minus B, is less than or equal to 0. Okay. So, how do I prove that? Take X prime equal to X minus B. This is just a temporary notation. And B prime is a family of all UI intersection X prime. Clearly, because B B, k, k, x prime is a subspace of x, p prime will be a basis for x prime, the subspace topology. And we have, if you take ui intersection x prime and its boundary in x prime, then boundary of, it is contained inside the boundary of ui intersection x prime. And these things are nothing but our notation is just bi intersection x prime and bi intersection x prime are all empty. Why? Because x prime is x minus b. All the union of all the uh, b i's has been thrown out. Okay. So, it follows that the condition in early, earlier theorem is satisfied, namely for n equal to 0. Okay. Therefore, dimension of x prime must be less than equal to 0. Okay. So, this is where we have used a n minus 1 since x is x b union x prime, we get c n. Okay. So, remember once again I recall this c n is a strange thing. C n is any subspace of dimension less than equal to n is the union of subspace of dimension n minus 1 and another subspace of dimension 0. So, c n is proved. Okay. Now, it remains to prove a n minus 1 and c n together implies a n. That will complete the proof of the theorem. So, start with x as a union of some closed subspaces, countably many closed subspaces, where each f i is closed, dimension of each f i is less than equal to n. So, Inductively, let us let me define these k i's. K one is f one, k two is f two minus f one, k three is f three minus f one union f two, and so on. Throw away all the earlier uh, sets because you are using some indexing here. Okay, so this is the way you have defined k one, k two, uh, k n, etc. Then x is union of k i is also this kind of thing we have used several times. Now, k i intersection k j is empty for i not equal to k. This is the extra hypothesis we get, where that hypothesis is not there on f i's. Okay, by, by construction, uh, k i and k j's will all be mutually disjoint. Each k i is f sigma. Now, I cannot say that k i's are closed. Okay. Each, uh, each k i is f i minus something. So, it is a open subset inside a closed subset. Closed subsets are all metric spaces here. So, any open subset of a metric space is f sigma. So, each k i is f sigma. Okay. This is where our b n will play the role that is all. Dimension of k i is less than equal to n because they are subspecies of f i. Okay. So, I am stating 1 and 2 are obvious set theoretically. For 3, first notice that x is x minus i ring to 1 to fj, this is an open set in x, 
which is a separable matrix space and each and each sigma sigma is same these are x sigma but then ki is fy intersection x minus this one so that's also f sigma okay directly you can use fy is our matrix spaces and apply this one also the four is true because ki is a subset of fy because fy is of dimension less than root n okay now we can apply cn to each ki because they are f sigma right ki equal to mi union ni okay that is the meaning of cn where dimension of mi is less than equal to n minus 1 and dimension of ni is less than equal to 0 okay put m equal to union of these mi and n equal to union of these ni since ki intersection kj these are all mutually disjoint ki intersection kj is empty each for each mi which is m intersection ki see k is mi union mi m is union of mi So if I look at just M I, it is just the whole thing intersection with K I because they are all disjoint subsets, right? So each of them is F sigma inside M. Therefore, we can apply A n minus one is the same thing as B n minus one, right? So if it's F sigma, it's same thing as they are two subsets, and conclude that dimension of M is less than equal to n minus. Whether you apply n minus one directly or b n minus one, you can directly apply b n minus one because they are f sigma. So dimension of m is less than one. Similarly, each of these n i's are dimension zero. Therefore, dimension of n, which is a countable union, is less than equal to zero. Okay, from one, it follows that x is m union n. What is m? For what is one? X is union of k i. Okay, each k i is written like this. Union of k i will be m i union n i, which is m union n. That's all. From nine point sixteen whatever theorem, we conclude that dimension of x is less than equal to n. Okay. So the inductive proof is completed. From countable union, from uh, you know union of two things, we have proved the same thing for countable union. All right. So this theorem is about now. I will repeat this theorem. Is countable union of closed subspaces of dimension less than equal to n does not increase the dimension. Okay. Let's go ahead now. If X is union of two subsets, each of them dimension less than or equal to n, and B is closed. Then dimension of X is less than equal to n. Same kind of uh, result. Instead of zero, we have now general n here. It is similar to what we have proved in 9.6. Convert the non-closed set into a countable union. Okay, we don't convert that itself. We take the complement of of B inside X, and that convert that and take intersection with that. Yeah, that's all. So its proof is similar to that one. Now, a special case here: if X is X prime union singleton, then dimension of X prime is less than equal to n, and sorry, and dimension of X prime less than equal to n, dimension of X less than equal to n, because here you know the dimension of X now that is zero. Okay. Oh, this is important only if x prime is non-empty. After all, so here is a remark now of our uh, famous and popular example, Kronstadt Kuratowski space K. It is a subspace of R to remember, and it has uh, proved that it is connected space. In any case. It is being subset of R two. It is of dimension less than or equal to two. Now, note that for each P inside K, there exists an arbitrary small open rectangle R with sides parallel to the coordinate axis, such that 
the boundary of r intersection k is a zero dimensional space okay remember how the uh, uh, this knaster kurato scheme is uh, constructed okay uh, this point uh, half comma 1 okay from there you are taking lines joining to the points inside the uh, uh, scanter set but those lines are all perforated either they consist only rational numbers or they consist only irrational numbers depending upon what point you are uh, adding to uh, what point in the scanter set you are taking so use that property to see that the boundary of any rectangle intersection k is zero dimensional it will have line segments but that line segments will be perforated all through right therefore k is of dimension less than equal to 1 by our definition because it has a base with uh, with this property now what are the possibilities minus 1 is not possible because non empty okay a zero dimensional space cannot be connected so it is not zero dimensional hence dimension of k is equal to 1 okay it's less than equal to 1 and minus 1 and 0 are not possible now you apply this corollary okay that k prime x prime you take it as is k not namely obtained by subtracting the apex point 1 by 2 comma 1 from k okay this is also of dimension 1 is what i want to claim here okay so why because if it is of if it is of dimension 0 or minus minus 1 is not possible right because it is non empty if it is of dimension 0 then after adding this point this will be also of dimension 0 all right therefore this must be already of dimension 1 however notice that it is totally disconnected space okay so that is sort of some surprise quite often people understand totally disconnected space are of dimension 0 the in our definition it does not you know behave like that So totally disconnected spaces can be of higher dimension. Indeed, examples of totally disconnected spaces of dimension n for any finite n, these are also known. We will not go into those examples anyway. Another corollary is: take a subspace of dimension less than equal to n. Then every point p inside X. not in the x prime now i am making a statement about global statement about x itself as arbitrary small neighborhoods in x whose boundaries have intersection with x prime of dimension less than prime the statement about p belonging to x prime follows by the definition of dimension of x prime less than prime but this is now for all points inside x itself they are also have uh, such a neighborhood only thing is the boundaries are not less than root dimension n minus 1 but the boundary intersection x prime is of dimension s so for this you have to apply the above corollary okay and uh, theorem 9.5 to x prime union p that's all here it is dimension dimension is less than root n So apply there and then um, uh, then take uh, you know uh, then you can remove the point P. That's all. I mean, actually, you want neighbors of P, so there is no need to remove the point. You can take the boundary. The boundary will be ob obviously intersection with X prime will be all inside X prime. Thus, above corollary is a direct generalization of nine point fifty. okay so let me just recall this 9.15 what uh, because i have several, several times i am referring to this one see this is what we had 
the global characterization of a subspace in terms of what is happening inside x itself dimension of exponential is not rain if and only if for every point in x there is a neighborhood arbitrary small neighborhood w of p such that dimension of boundary of w intersected with x prime is less than or equal to minus okay so this is the theorem that we have used there okay so thus what we are ready now for ready reference we state the condition cn as a corollary because we have proved that now right an implies an minus 1 implies cn actually so let us have that one because it is not just a subsidiary uh, statement in, a, in the inside the proof so let us uh, state it separately what is it every space x of dimension less than equal to n is the union of a space of dimension n minus 1 and a space of dimension less than equal to 0 once again if you take empty set that is this is not <laughs> if this is empty set this itself will be dimension less than equal to n minus 1 that is that will so in this statement the second part will be automatically non zero non empty okay repeated application of this is interesting namely if we have a you know separable matrix space of dimension less than or equal to n but this n must be finite that is important okay then and then only it is the union of n plus 1 subspaces each of which is less than equal to dimension 0 okay here i can put equality also provided equal there is an equality here all right so we don't have to worry about getting equality so you know so much uh, sometimes it is not possible that is why we have to be careful that's all let p and q be any integer bigger than or equal to minus just put p plus q plus 1 equal to n okay this is a definition of n that's all given any separable matrix space x of dimension less than equal to n that is p plus q plus 1 that's all separable matrix space of dimension less than equal to n there exists subspaces p q such that x is union of p and q dimension of this capital p is less than equal to p dimension of capital q is less than equal to q so this is the generalization of now you know writing just arbitrary subsets n and 0 we can break the n into any way you like a partition p plus q plus 1 and then you will have this theorem so how do you do that that is not very difficult you have to use this one cleverly inductively okay theorem 9.26 we can use that okay finally as an easy consequence of the above results we shall prove the following now we have come to products x and y are separable matrix spaces at least one of them non empty okay if you assume both of them are non empty uh, well there will be some problem we will see one of them is non empty other one is empty what happens this will be empty space okay so what is the statement non empty and finite dimensional okay they are both finite dimensional then the dimension of the product is less than the dimension of x the dimension of y okay so if both of them are empty what happens this will be minus 2 but this is always minus 1 you see so if both of them are empty this statement is wrong not correct only for that reason we have to assume that at least one of them is non empty so that i have get got here zero at zero and minus one minus one that's fine this is empty also all right so empty one of them is empty is uh, is already taken care so we can assume that both of them are non empty also 
by symmetry we may assume that y is non empty we shall induct on dimension of x plus dimension of y as usual the statement is obvious if dimension of x plus dimension of y is minus 1 okay this plus this minus 1 means this must be 0 and this must be 1 okay or anything you like but you can't have anything else here because uh, dimension cannot be less than minus 1 okay so that statement that part is only used. this is minus 1 by chance what is it this must be 0 because we are assuming this is non zero so this must be zero and this must be empty so assume that all spaces a and b with this property dimension of a plus dimension of b is less than or equal to less than dimension of x plus dimension so this is the induction hypothesis the statement is true okay having verified it for minus 1 now we are assuming this could be any value bigger than or equal to 0 then this one then you take the statement to be true for all the values namely dimension of a plus dimension of b all spaces dimension of a plus dimension of b less than this dimension plus dimension dimension of x plus dimension ok so that is the inductive hypothesis for any point x y inside x cross y we have arbitrary small neighborhoods by the definition of product space u cross v where u cross v are neighborhoods of x and y respectively such that dimensions of the boundaries add up to some number less than equal dimension of x plus dimension of y minus 1 each time this minus 1 that minus 1 ok so minus 2 ho gaya. now what is boundary of u cross v it is by definition u cross boundary of v union boundary of u cross v right boundary of u cross v is that one you can take the closures here boundary of u cross v same thing as boundary of u bar cross v bar u bar cross v bar ok so that you can take the closures here then you will get u bar cross boundary of v union boundary of u cross v bar ok by induction hypothesis each of them is of dimension less than or equal to dimension of x plus dimension of y minus 1 ok also both of them are closed see here u bar is a full thing that only dimension of this one goes down that is why it is dimension of x plus dimension of y minus 1 here this one is dimension full dimension of y but this one is dimension goes down so this is like equal to mi minus 1 because it is a union also both of them are closed thereby corollary 9.20 will apply dimension of u cross boundary of u cross v is less than or equal to dimension of this plus dimension of this minus 1 ok so the theorem is proved special case if y is 0 dimensional then dimension of x plus y x cross y is dimension of x plus dimension of y which is just dimension of x so taking product with a zero dimensional space does not increase the dimension ok so what is why this special case of this one all that I have to do is y is non empty because it is a zero dimensional we have x cross y sitting inside x cross capital Y for some y inside y ok this is coordinate inclusion therefore dimension of x is same thing as dimension of x cross singleton y which is subspace of this one so this is less than to dimension of x cross y which is of course dimension of x so equality occurs otherwise we had only less than or equal to but here equality occurs because it is sitting inside between these two so dimension of x cross y must be equal to dimension of x
one may anticipate that the above statement is true in general just like dimension of rn cross rm is equal to rn plus a, n plus m right so it would be a nice thing so one may anticipate the above statement is true so you can ask this question is dimension of x cross y equal to dimension of x cross dimension of y in general this is not the case as soon as you have huge spaces the huge necessary the, the meaning of huge is not with respect to dimension here unfortunately okay you don't have to go to infinite dimension if infinite dimension equality holds automatically that is not the case so what is the example example is our fav favorite example namely all the points with rational coordinates inside the l2 space ql okay of all points in the hilbert space l2n coordinates are all rational so this is of dimension 1 right this is what we have proved earlier but now you can take ql cross ql again isomorphic to ql okay by obvious kind of you know, shifting right x1 x2 xn y1 y2 yn interlace them x1 x1 y1 x2 y2 and so on okay interlace them what you get is again ql cross ql is isomorphic to ql in fact you can you can this uh, this uh, trick you can use ql cross ql cross ql any number of finite number of times again i smart to ql you can say okay so this is dimension 1 this dimension 1 but this is also dimension 1 so dimension hasn't added up here okay so let us stop here next time we will launch a program to prove that dimension of the real you know for the the euclidean space rn is actually equal to n thank you